Hello and welcome to our video on basic hacking for an alpha clone and today we're going to do it in the Galante way here in this lovely Imacus. Now if you've seen some of our other videos you would have seen me do some scanning in a Heron. The difference between the two is basically here we've got three low slots instead of two on the Heron and four mid slots instead of five on the Heron. But the basic setup is identical. Core Probe Launcher 1 is of course absolutely essential to launch the probes and today we're just going to use the basic Core Scanner probes, not the Sisters of Eve version which are much more expensive. We're just going to see how far we can get with a small gravity capacitor upgrade uh, boosts our scan strength and the emission scope sharpener boosts the strength of our Relic Analyzer which is fitted right there in the mid slot. We've also gone again with the Cargo Scanner rather than fitting a data analyzer now we'll talk about that in a moment the scan range finding array gives us another boost to our scan strength so we can get the signatures up to 100 percent and locked and we've got the restrained micro warp drive to get us between the boxes on the sites as quickly as possible save time in high sec you've got the competition of other pilots in low sec etc you have the competition of people trying to kill you down at the bottom we've got a warp core stabilizer which stops us getting pinned if by a warp disruptor we've got the restrained inertial stabilizer and the nanofiber internal structure they're basically to make the ship agile and more fast to get into warp as quick as possible i'm going to turn off the warp core stabilizer you'll see there that our targeting range is 40 kilometers just over it halves um, for each warp core stabilizer you got fitted that's not a real problem really for this role and this ship we've got to be within five kilometers to use the, the analyzers and the cargo scanner 20 kilometers is really long enough range to check the boxes in the cargo hold we have the data analyzer and we do have a set of the sisters core scanner probes just in case we get stuck you'll see those scanner probes are worth three million so the actual fit of this ship is, is about eight hundred thousand. it's actually just under and just a little bit of detail on the fit and, and why i've made some of the decisions that i have i fitted one scan finding array now that is very useful i think it does the job it's boosting our scan strength by five percent i've seen people fit two of those and take up two mid slots and i think that's total overkill the emission scope sharpener gives us 10 points bonus to the coherence basically the strength of our relic analyzer and i believe you make more money on relic sites in general than you do on ghost sites the gravity capacitor upgrade is giving us another 10 percent scan strength bonus I think that is more than enough. I've seen guys using fits with two scan finding arrays and two gravity capacitor upgrades and I think that's total overkill and a waste of a rig slot and a waste of a mid slot. That's my opinion. I think you're just overpowered there. Um, I'd suggest you upgrade ships as you need to. And there's also the Sisters of Eve scan probe launcher which costs I think over 20 million isk. And again, that's another 10% bonus to your scan strength, but I think it's overkill. I really, really do. Um, I've never fitted one of those to a ship. Right, we're going to get scanning now. We're here in high sec. No one's going to try and kill us. We can just pop out of the station, undock, launch our probes. No need for a safe spot or to go and hide anywhere. And we can just uh, do the business. Now, you've all done the exploration career agent missions, I'm sure i highly recommend you do if you haven't you'll get some equipment you'll get a ship and you'll learn the basics and this is quite a simple process i always start at 8 au you've got the slider scale down there you can also use the mouse wheel to adjust it when you're over it if you press control you can adjust the position if you press shift you can uh see where the actual individual probes are there and you could move them individually in their formation but there's absolutely no need to and um, before they uh, maybe two or three years ago changed the UI for scanning greatly and made it in this kind of visual it was quite hard work and it was quite manual but um, luckily we don't have to worry about that anymore right so with my range set to eight I'm going to analyze here I've actually not put it right over a signature I've kind of put it in the middle of this group of four if I can get um, some percentage on each of them it might identify them you never know Let's, we can get more specific once we've got a little bit of information right here we go so we've got a little reading on all of them that also means that from now on for any of those signatures we can start at 4 AU because we've already got that position which will stay on the map from the 8 AU scan so bear that in mind you don't need to keep going back to 8 AU 
and starting again when you go back to any of these signatures to scan them down further. So now we're going to get a little bit more particular. Remember we're scanning in 3D, so you hold the right button down to move the map around in its plane. You get your probes right over that signature, you bring down your range by one click, and you scan again. And it's basically rinse and repeat, and as I said here in HiSec, um, no need for D-scans, no need to watch your local. You can just take your time, and this is really where the area is a space where you want to learn all this, so you can do all this as quickly and as intuitively as possible when you are doing it in the more hazardous and exciting and, of course, rewarding areas of space. But we'll get on with this now. And the first signature we've got is a relic site, and we're down to our minimum scan range, quarter AU, and we've only got to 86%. Now, we are using the basic probes, remember. So uh, if we were using the sisters' probes, which are much more expensive but a little bit more powerful, uh, we wouldn't be having this problem yet. But anyway, all we need to do is get this zoomed in as a centered as far as we can. Then we're going to zoom out, we're going to hold control, and using the mouse wheel, we're going to reduce these the probe positions so they're basically almost on top of each other to absolutely focus our scan as much as possible because we've only got to 86 percent the way we were so we're going to rescan hold our breath and cross our fingers and by reducing the uh the position of the probes into a very tight formation there you go we've got the 100 percent. so that is how you do that if you need that last sort of 14 maybe up to 20 percent you can do it by squeezing the probes in put them back out where they were because that's where you want them for the more general scanning you want them in a bit slightly wider formation but for that final scan the final kind of 15 ish percent focus them in hold control and then put them back out so on with the show so we've got that one scan we're going to zoom off over there we've walked over we're in high sec we've got no stress so we can carry on scanning sort of our leisure in the background I've accidentally popped the map into a different mode there. I don't want it full screen. I want it floating. There we are. Thank you very much. And I'll just tuck you over there. And we can get on with hacking this site. We're totally multitasking. We're scanning down another site. We've cargo scanned the box we're about to hack. And we're just getting ready to cargo scan the next one that's within range. The one we're about to hack has got just over 600,000 isks worth of loot in it, so that's very nice. So let's get on with a hack. Now, high sec hacking should not throw up any challenges, right? We've run straight into a defense subsystem firewall, which basically we destroy. It takes down our coherence on our analyzer as we do so. Its coherence is 40, which we're going to reduce by 25 each time we click it, because that's our strength, and his strength is 20, so he will reduce our coherence by 20 each time we click it. That's basically how that works. So, we've got a spanner, which is great, that repairs us for the next three clicks that we make, no matter where they are. And we're looking for these numbers to get down lower and lower, leading us towards, hopefully, the node that we need to hack to unlock the box. So no, we're a bit trapped in here. We'll look, look up there. Now there we've got a utility subsystem that basically protects us from the damage on a, a couple of clicks as we attack the next firewall. So they're very useful. There you go, he's down. Now we, we're two away from what we want, so we're going to look over here. There you go. Very easy. Double click on the unlocked box and there's the loot 674 grand which is almost a ship paid for which is quite good now not a huge amount from that first site here's the second one we've got to go through the same process again we made about 900,000 from the first relic site that we did which pays for another ship should we accidentally lose one but you shouldn't really do that in high sec let's see what we get from the second one same method we've had to focus in the probes using holding down control and the mo mouse wheel to get this final 100% so we can get up there. Let's see if we can do any better up on this site. And just to make things a little bit clearer, I've loaded the sisters probes into the launcher so they're not showing up as the total loot in the cargo bay. So we've got about 32,000 to take off for the cheap probes. So we're doing okay so far. We've made about 4.4 million. And that was without using the more expensive Sisters of Eve probes, which we can now afford to buy from the money that we've made. We've still got some more boxes to hack here. I've checked them. They're actually rubbish. Uh, one's empty, one's got carbon in it, and one's got carbon and one chip. 
So what we're going to do now is have a quick little look at a data site. Absolutely the same principles. We're in a heron now. Now if you wondered why I have preferred setting up my ships for relic analyzing, it's because in general they make more money. Um, that's what I found. However, in high sec, as we'll see, that's a little bit more debatable. So I understand now why uh, players that play more in high sec might want to go for a data analyzer. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to stick with my going for relics and using data as the backup. The best data sites you're going to find are ghost sites, and the hacks on those aren't normally too hard. So that's why I still prefer the relic orientated fittings for my ship. Now in the Imicus, all we need to do is we find a data site we want to hack, but we haven't got the module fitted, is obviously just dock and fit it. As you can see, I'm going through the motions here of just scanning some stuff down. Showing you there, that's when you hold shift. Now you could wiggle these around. You used to have to in the olden days that um, you had to click and drag everything into position to reduce your radiuses. But again, we're onto the hack now on the data site and it is exactly the same principle. It's just track these numbers down to one. Now the nodes that light up like that, you don't really have to unlock them because it might be something bad. It could be something good, but until we need anything, then there you go. We found the, uh, the lock for the loot very quickly. And there we are, just over 600,000 from the first box. So we're going to scan the boxes ahead of us as we had before. There's always one that's absolute junk. You may as well avoid it. It's up to you. I don't hang around wanting things to respawn. You may want to collapse all of the boxes, basically unlock all the boxes to make the site collapse so it respawns. And you've got another site to hack. I move around. I'm not interested in that. I'm more liable, especially in high, uh, low sec. Uh, in an area where I hang out to leave the rubbish boxes so I know where the site is and maybe get somebody else to come up there hacking for me to kill. So we've cleared that data site. The other box that you can see on the overview is actually um, empty, so I'm bothered. And we've made, if we take off the cost of the probes, about three and a half million. We've also got the blueprint for the ancillary small armor repairer, which is very handy. And we can make up to 10 of those off of that blueprint. So, uh, yeah, we can make up to 900,000. And uh, have a look at my industry guide if you want to see how to build them. Right. Scan ships are not just for scanning signatures and hacking. So let's show you a little trick. I'm taking off the core probe launcher. I'm going to fit onto my Heron. And this will fit on any of the scanning ships. What I'm doing now applies to all of those ships. You will see that the difference between the expanded probe launcher, which you need to fire combat probes into space, is a huge amount of CPU on your fit. So all you need to do is turn off these. If you're using combat scanners, you're not necessarily going to need your analyzers. So simply switch them off, fit the expanded core probe launcher and the combat probes. I've got the Sisters of Eve because I don't think if you're going to be combat probing, you want to be messing about with the cheat ones. I've actually spotted some Tech 2 drones that seem to have been abandoned on my travels. I've seen them on my D-scan. And I'm going to go off and try to grab them. And I'm just going to check the filters on this screen to make sure everything's switched on. You can adjust it there to reduce clutter. Um, you won't find you really need to in high sec and really low sec. But in wormholes and null sec where you can get a lot of signatures and anomalies. And you want to switch some of them off. So use the filter to tidy up your screen. Right, so we're off to the next system, which is where I spotted the probes, uh, sorry, the drones on my D-scan. And we're gonna scan them down, which is exactly the same uh, process and principles as scanning down a signature. You just need the combat probes and the expanded probe launcher to fit them in. D-scanning, etc. I've covered in other videos. I'm gonna link to my low sec ratting and hacking video because that gives you a bit more detail on how to defend yourself with the D-scan, etc. The link in the description, I do advise that you watch that. Goes into a little bit more about low sec life. Here we go. On the D-scan, we've got the four, five, sorry, infiltrator twos that are probably gonna be worth two or three million, not a huge amount, but they're there, so why not get it? There's one guy in local who's in that Ishtar and uh, I'm not going to worry too much about him. I'm going to warp off to a safe spot like I've already got made. And again, I've shown you in other videos how to make your safe spots in systems. Just bookmarking while you're warping between two points and then warping back there. Now, I know they're on my D scan where I am, so they can't be too far away. So I don't need a really huge radius for my scanning. I'm just going to start with 8AU right in the middle of this sort of area. 
and see if we can pick up the trail of those drones. So off we go. And as I said, exactly the same principles then. We just need to reduce our scan radiuses, move our probes onto where the signature seems likely to be, and uh, keep an eye on the D scan and local because we're in low sec. So there we go, we've got 5%, they're all grouped together over here. They're not close to a, uh, a bookmark or a, or a structure that we could just warp to and hopefully find them quite close. This stuff here, we don't really need it. We could ignore the results, but there's not too many. We can warp to the ones that are locked. Um, those structures, etc., they're not really that useful. You're very rarely going to need to find those. But anyway, we're on. We're trying to track down some loot. So we're just going to continue the processes we have seen until we've got 100% and we can walk to their location. Just checking on the D scan, although I'm not feeling too fearful in here. We've got a Galante Frigate Wreck, which probably a venture knowing what they get up to around here. The sisters combat probes you can see is showing on my D scan. If they're not your probes, then you're being hunted potentially. So that's really what you want to watch out for, especially when you're at a pre-saved safe spot as I am. And there's only me in local now, so I can kind of relax a little bit and just zoom on in. And we're down to one AU scan already, and I'll get back to you when we're ready to go and grab them. Here we are, we're only down to 0.5 AU, so it's only taken us four scans to get the 100% and we can walk straight over to these drones and pick Active. them up. Now, we've got the combat probes out, it doesn't mean we can't scan the signatures as well, so I'm going to do that while we're here. We've got the system to ourselves, so why not? Um, yeah, do bear that in mind, you can't not scan signatures just because you're using combat probes. They may not be as strong as the core scanner probes, but they can do the job. And while we're here, why not? Let's see what we can find. Now, we've walked to where these drones are, as you can see on the overview, and all we have to do is get within 2,500 metres uh, and just scoop them to cargo hold or scoop them to drone bay, depending on whether you've got space, etc. And that's it, and they're yours. Um, no trace of your theft is left, basically. So I'm going to take some of these signatures off of here. I don't need to see the ships and the other bits and bobs now filter that down carry on grabbing these guys and we'll just have a look at a couple of these signatures and see what we can find and our combat probes have found us a ghost site a wonderful standard serpentis covert research facility um, we've looked at ghost sites before google it if you don't know quite what i'm talking about it is a data site on a timer now my policy at the moment with alpha clones and alpha skills is to grab one box and run uh, once the rats spawn, you're pretty much dead. I'm going to save that location just in case I need to make any adjustments. I'm just tidying up my bookmarks, actually. Should have done that before I came out, but I only came out to grab those drones. And here's my pro tip. I'm putting offline the launcher because we don't need it. We've scanned down the signature. I can then put online the data analyzer whilst I'm in space. So basically switch modes of my ship. As long as you've got 95% capacitor, you can t online a module while you're in space. No need to go and dock. And we've got a Vexer in sight. I'm not too worried about him. I'm going to keep an eye out. But I'm just going to get up to this ghost site. I don't intend to be here very long. I don't know who this guy is. Right. So basically we've got four boxes here. They're all probably going to have pretty good loot in them. I want to lock one and scan it as quickly as possible and try to grab the best loot that I can see. But as I say, this is a real smash and grab job. So there's 25 millions worth in the first box that we've scanned. We're just scanning the second box. Uh, there's 3 million plus a blueprint for a chip, which is probably worth about equal value, I think, those two boxes. So it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're in 5,000 meters before you start hacking and that you slow down and aren't going to swing out of that if this box you miss the hack you die it will explode so we've got to be quite quick and a little bit careful but these hacks aren't usually too complicated come on let's find these numbers going down we're going to grab the spanner we need to kill him before he puts the coherence and strength of the other chips on the grid up Hacking, I will do a detailed video on if somebody wants to ask for one in a comment. 
Um, I find it quite intuitive. There we go. We've got the box. I have to do this very quickly because the time is ticking, as I said. And there we go. What a good little okay. loot grab. About 30 million um, in the drones and the loot from this here. Ghost site, which we found with our combat probes. So um, don't underestimate them. Don't restrict yourself. We're just going to do a runner now and get docked up with up this loot. As you can see, the blueprint for that chip wasn't worth as much as I'd thought. So we hacked the right box there. And as I said, made about 30 million isk between the drones that we grabbed and the site that we hacked. Brilliant. And I can assure you guys, early game alpha or Amiga hacking and scanning is where you're going to make so much money. And it's not just the sites. It's not just the retrieved drones. You've seen in my 400 million day video, me finding quarter of a billion um, worth of fighters abandoned after a battle. There's also the combat sites you can scan down, like the vigils um, I've done in videos where they're dropping me 60, 70 million in very low skill cruisers. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I will be making more detailed videos. We'll be going into wormholes, null sec, etc. As, as and when. Please leave me a like, leave me any comment you like, any suggestions. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch for now. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and fly safe.